cattle look as good as we've ever had. They're as content as they've ever been. And our manure looks like we're feeding the perfect feed. Where, is the, where are these nutrients coming from? Why is there this difference between what we've been taught and maybe what a uh, forage sample would show us and what's actually happening here? Yeah, that, that's an excellent question, and which, by the way, you've, you've even had university agronomists come out here and, and tell you that your cattle are not going to perform very well On here, right? Yes. So, so that's been told to you directly. Mm -hmm. But yet, as you said, your cattle are obviously doing just the opposite. So the short answer is this. It, number one, sometimes we don't measure things properly. Now, when, when we talk about how to take samples to send in to a lab, whether it's a university lab or a private lab for forage analysis, what are we told to do? You know, we're told to go out and, and, and clip an area, you know, down to three inches, mm -hmm. right, and clip all of that and send all of that in. And yet, is that how your cattle are grazing? Mm, no. No, not at all. So one of the ways that it's wrong is that what is actually being measured in the lab, it's not that the lab analysis is wrong, it's what's being measured. In other words, it's not the total forage that's here that they're grazing, they're picking and choosing or being able to eat the higher, right. higher uh, nutrients. So the cattle house. aren't eating what you're told to send in is the deal. They're eating an entirely different dietary array. They're not reading the book. They're not reading the book. And they're not following the lab guidelines. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. when we are grazing this way adaptively, that's why we see a, quite a significant disparity, actually, between laboratory forage analysis on our pastures mm -hmm. and how our cattle are actually performing out here. But the other, though, that is never taken into account in a standard forage test you know, we've been talking about every plant produces what? Secondary metabolites, right? Those are not measured in a standard forage test. You're only measuring primary nutrients. You're measuring crude protein, TDN, NDF, ADF, net energies, RFQ, that type of mm -hmm. thing. Well, none of that takes into account any of the secondary metabolites that these plants are producing. And what we're finding is that from a nutritional and health standpoint of our livestock, those secondary metabolites are far, far more important than those primary nutrients. And by the way, that follows through for our diets as well. So oftentimes, even in measuring or trying to measure the nutritional value of what we're eating, in our human diets, we're, do, we're making the same mistake. We're often not measuring the variables that make the most difference. We're measuring those things that we think makes make the most the difference. difference, right? And as a scientist myself, you know, I fell into that same trap. When I was at the university, I would review literally hundreds of forage analysis and hay analysis tests every year and then make recommendations, right? Mm -hmm. to, to whoever, whatever sure. farmer or yeah. rancher sent that yeah. sample in. And we were, you know, I'll just be very honest. At that point in time, we were taught, you know, well, you tell them feed this much corn or this much this or whatever. And that's what we would dutifully do. Okay, you need to feed two pounds, supplement two pounds of corn a day or five pounds of so soybean hulls a day or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I now know that I was actually part of the problem rather than the solution. I was, I was not interpreting those results correctly. <clears throat> Plus, I was giving them recommendations that were gonna cost them more money rather than less. And we're gonna cause them to improperly utilize their grazing rather than more efficiently and adequately utilize the grazing in the plant species array that was out here.